Good e morning, millennials. Welcome to the morning toast. We are so excited. Like literally, I haven't slept all night because we are sitting down with the queen of Netflix's brand new show, Too Hot to Handle, Francesca. Thank you, Francesca, for being here. Thank you guys for having me. I'm so hyped right now. We love you. We recap the show on our show, and we just really felt like you were the protagonist that we needed. It's our understanding that this show was filmed a little while ago. Is that right? A year ago, yeah. A year ago. Okay, yeah. and your life has changed. Yeah, pretty drastically. You got bangs. I did get bangs. They're really long right now because obviously my hairstylist is in quarantine, so I have to like part them. But usually they look like, good. Hey. They do look good. Thanks. So America fell in love with you on this fabulous reality show. We loved watching it. Um, the show made it seem like you just kind of signed up for a show that you thought was maybe like a dating show, hot people on the beach, and it turned out to be something else. So I'd be really curious what your experience getting on the show was. Like, what was the audition process and what did you think you were signing up for? Okay, so basically I was reached out to via Instagram DM from one of the members of production and she was just like, hey, we have this new um, reality show on Netflix. We think you'd be perfect for it. Um, are you interested? You want to hop on a Skype call? So all my friends were like, no, they're going to kidnap you. Like, please don't do this. And I was like, <laughs> kind of seems legit. Like they sent me some Fremantle, which is the production company in the UK. They sent me some files and stuff like that. So I looked them up. It looked legit. So I had a few Skype calls with a few of the producers and they just asked me what my stuff, my sex life was like. They asked me about relationships, best dates, worst dates, about my Instagram DMs, stuff like that. And literally a few weeks later, I was on a plane to Mexico. So it was very, very quick. Oh, and so wow. you filmed in Mexico. Yeah, it was Mexico. Yeah. How long, how long were you guys filming the show for? Cause you guys were saying a month, but then it felt super quick. It was a month. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. And so you, you really get to a- know people. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it was a month of everyone sleeping in the same room. I couldn't believe that there weren't men in women's quarters because most shows are like that. And I couldn't believe that some people slept on the floor, Bryce. Yeah. So they were so mean to Bryce. They'd no one wanted to cop up their bed to share with Bryce. So that's why he had to sleep on the floor. It was so oh. sad. I'm like, poor Bryce. Like I had to share my locker with him because no one wanted to give up their locker. I'm like, you guys are evil. Be nice to Bryce. Well, how did so they not have enough lockers for everyone? So there was eight lockers. Yeah eight lockers, two showers, two bathrooms that were separate from the showers, and then the six beds. So I think at one point, like there was like 13 of us there. So a few of us did have to sleep on the floor and the lockers, I think, I'm not sure how it was planned, but I think they just wanted us to see if there was drama with sharing the lockers, like stuff like that. I got into a fight about with Sharon about sharing the locker. He didn't want to give up half of his locker for Bryce. So I ended up having to do it. I'm like, I'm a girl. I have more shit than you. Like you do it. (laughs) Oh, but. Well, then I have another question about the logistics because you guys had so many days and so many bathing suits. And I did see some bathing suit sharing because uh, Chloe was wearing that one with the loose side strap and then someone else was wearing it. And when you got into a fight with Chloe, sh- you said she was wearing your bathing suit. Yeah. So uh, my closet was basically open. It was free game for the whole cast. And it was kind of like that with everyone else's clothes as well. So I brought the most bikinis. I probably brought like 200. So they were, I let them use them, but I thought after we were arguing that she, she was like, don't talk to me. I didn't expect her to still wear my bikini. Right. <laughs> I, if I was waiting on something, I wouldn't be like, don't talk to me anymore. By the way, I'm still going to go into your closet and steal your bikini. So I was like, what the hell? Like, that doesn't make sense. But production did give us as well. I think there was like 10 swimsuits that they brought in from a brand that we were wearing that we were like kind of communal and the girls kind of snagged those as well. But yeah, the closets are basically being shared. Like we we're all just sharing clothes. Was there a laundry machine? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So if we had yeah. our laundry, we had to put them in a bag and we hung them on our dressing thing. And then laundry was done every few days. Interesting. Oh, nice. Okay. So we want to talk about some of the friendships in the house. Who do you still talk to and are cool with? So me and Haley, of course, are still friends. We talk every Love. single day. Obviously, Haley, or sorry, Harry as well. Um, him and I are great. And then I actually got closer with Nicole and Chloe after filming and stuff like that. But everyone else, like, we have a group chat and we talk every day. Like, everyone messages a group chat saying, oh, congrats on this. Or, oh, my God, I can't believe this person follows you now. Stuff like that. But I don't really, like... I'm not as close with the rest of the group, and I don't think Harry is either. Like, there was some stuff that was hard to watch back, and... It just is what it is. Like if you put 10 people in a house from all over the world, like not everyone's going to get along. So 
So speaking of things that were difficult to watch back, you know, I started the show and I was like, Francesca, ride or die. And it was really frustrating for me on that first kind of bump in with you and Harry's relationship. It's like, he totally threw you under the bus. So did everyone else. And then like, we never got justice. Like we know for a fact, Harry kissed you. And not only did he throw you under the bus, he lied on your name and we never got like a full circle. Was that edited out? Have you guys spoken about that? Is that still a point of contention? Um... Honestly, it was really hard because while I was living it, um, what I was seeing was what you guys saw for the Lana reveal. So when he was like, oh, that didn't happen. But he was kind of saying that stuff under his breath. So I didn't really hear that either. Like, I just thought he was trying to, like, not sewer himself. But, like, the bed scene with Rhonda when they were like, oh, she's toxic. Meh. And then the scene in the room with the boys where he was like, she kissed me. And they're like, oh, like, you're just a wounded puppy. We'll take you. I didn't. I didn't know any of that until I watched the show last week. So that, I was like, you little fucking shit. Huh? <laughs> but before the show came out, like, I was more concerned that he was going to be mad about Corey and Kel's dates. So we promised each other, like, okay, no matter what we see, we're not going to get grumpy. Like, we're going to, because obviously we're not together right now, so I can't, like, hug him. So we just promised each other. But he knew that that scene was going to happen. He didn't even warn me. So I was just like... <laughs> like of course I can't get mad about it now because it's been a year and everything happened like that was at the very beginning of the retreat like we weren't as close you know what I mean like we didn't really know each other that well so he didn't really owe me too much like he was more concerned with being in the group than he was with being with me which is like rude but yeah but yeah. now you guys have been together for almost a year because you filmed in April right mm -hmm. There is Happy a anniversary. Lot of, oh, yeah. <laughs> there is a lot of speculation that you and Harry are either married or engaged. And I would just like you to speak on the rumors, please. Okay, so there was photos and videos of us that I was posting from when we were in Ontario together visiting my family and when we were whatever, whatever. So we had promise rings that we were wearing on our ring finger that we both got. So I think everyone's like zooming in and being like, we got a wedding ring. Like, we're not married yet um we're not engaged like he's asked me to marry him a few times over the phone and over skype and he like we have a shared folder called wedding rings and it's really cute but i want to do it properly like obviously i don't want to get engaged over a zoom phone call so <laughs> wait until we can like hang out but i was saying, like because we're in quarantine and if the borders are staying closed for a while i'm like dead ass let's get married online so you can come and then we'll do it official again later but so you can come to canada like because that's the only way that he can come here is if like we're spouse spousal where is he yeah. quarantined he's quarantined in la hmm. not terrible but, but i can't yeah, but i can't go there because he's not uh, an american citizen so oh oh wow Struggles. This is very 90 day fiance. I know. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, I have a question for you because because you and Harry like met in this not um, normal quote unquote situation. Does it affect your relationship now? Like considering the way that you met, like things that you learned on the show, like do you guys have more of an appreciation for being able to touch each other because you couldn't for so long? Yeah. So when we were finished filming and we got off the retreat, we were literally making out every five seconds. Like I think he posted <laughs> video on his Instagram of just like a minute of us kissing like that is all we were doing we were joined at the hip and of course now we can't touch again so it's like we're in the retreat basically all over again but way <laughs> way, way, way 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 worse because I can't even like kiss him on the cheek so that's been really hard but it just makes it honestly just makes us appreciate appreciate each other way more like we value and I don't take anything that I have with him for granted that's yeah. so cute. And I have another question um, that was really bothering me the whole time was the money because obviously $100,000 sounds like a lot of money. But then at one point there was 13 people and it was just like confusing as to whether or not everyone was getting 100,000. We were splitting it. Now you ended up splitting it with, with I think nine other castmates and I'm dying to know after taxes, what did you get? Um, so I got, because I'm Canadian and the conversion rate, like the 35% or whatever, US is lower. I ended up getting like Eleven hundred dollars. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Which is I thought time. you meant eleven thousand for a second. Oh, wait, no. like, oh my god! Oh my god! Yeah, eleven thousand. Sorry, not eleven hundred. I'm. I'm. Oh. Yeah. yeah oh, eleven thousand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> 
wow, my brain is not working today. Oh my, oh, that's, that's so fine. funny. Imagine, Imagine enough if money. 100, oh my God, I would, <laughs> I, would, I would lose it. I would mess with production and be like, huh? Oh my, that's so <laughs> funny. Okay, that makes 1100 bucks. Fuck that. Yeah. That makes me feel better totally. though. Like that was well earned. Yeah, for sure. Well, I don't think everyone deserves the prize money, but there people agreed. I didn't deserve any of it. So no. Like, agreed. Nicole did not deserve it. And neither did Chloe. Yeah. I said well, you it. You know what was frustrating? As viewers, like, we saw Chloe kiss some people that she was never called out for, like, in the group with Lana. Like, even when she kissed um, Bryce, I think. Um, she never got her come up. And so was that just cut out because it, like, wasn't as interesting? Or did you guys ever really not know about that? She never got her come up in battle, I think. As I said, like, I feel like I said this a few times on filming. Like, I was getting in shit for everything I was doing, but everyone else was losing money and it was literally like oh my gosh like that's amazing <laughs> i was kissing someone who i was fucking in love with basically and he was just kissing everyone to see if there was a connection that's not the point of this lady the point is to form the connection and not kiss not to kiss to see if you had a connection like harry and i knew we had a connection from day one and that's why it was so hard not to break the rules because we knew we already had it so yeah I was the only person that was getting shit on for breaking the rules. Like, it was literally all me. Like, not even Harry. Harry was getting away with it. Like, he would do it, like, and they would be like, hee hee, Harry, you're so funny. And then, <laughs> like, That's what was really frustrating for me to watch was, like, I felt like, yes, you did cost the competition a lot of money, but it was, like, all for the greater good. Like, you were obviously, like, having real feelings and, like, really growing and connecting. And it's, like, Chloe was, like, the cool, most popular girl. And, like, she kissed three people, um, never made a connection, never got a second date. And it's, like, why does nobody care? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Is that I it? don't know. I think it's hard because I did lose the most money, so that automatically makes them not like me. But, there, yeah, there's all those other kisses that weren't even considered to be bad. Like, I lost a, lo a lot of money, but the relationship I have now is worth every penny. And other people that lost a lot of money don't even talk. So it's like, what was really worth it? Uh, what was worth so it? So are, are you talking about Sharon and Rhonda? Are they still together? They haven't seen each other since Tom. Ooh, sixteen thousand dollars down the drain. Right? <laughs> totally. Yeah. <laughs> that was not worth it. See, it would be a shame if Harry and I lost all this money and then we weren't still together, then it would have been a waste. But we are, and like everyone else that lost the money together don't talk, don't speak. So it's like Damn. Um, <laughs> can I take some questions from Instagram? We got so many questions for you. Mm -hmm. This is a great question from S.M. Holman. When did you guys eat? Did you have scheduled times to hang out without the cameras rolling? I'm really curious about the food situation. Was there a kitchen? Okay, so I go thought going into it that we were going to have to make our own food because they asked us what our favorite food was, but that was not the case. So the villa came with this private chef, and he was insane. So every morning, the alarm would go off. Lana would be like, good morning, whatever. We would wake up. There would be a spread of coffee and tea waiting for us. There would be this insane breakfast spread of like waffles, pancakes, vegan stuff for me, fruit, eggs and bacon for the boys, like massive spread of food. And then we would all eat and then we would get ready for the day, figure out what was going on. And then around noon, lunch, same thing. So a different lunch spread every single day. We would have requests. We'd be like, we want pizza, we want lasagna, we want deep fried Oreos. Like the chef made everything. And then for dinner as well, it was the same situation. So the craziest spread of food and the mics, we didn't have the mics on during dinner time and there wasn't cameras facing the table, but there was production standing around the table, making sure we didn't talk about anything like sneaky. And there was also mics hooked up to under the table. So if I said something like, like, you know what I mean? Like they wanted to catch everything and they didn't want anything to be said that was juicy to not be on the cameras. So we literally couldn't get away with talking about anything. Like if they heard us talking about something juicy, the production would come and like literally sit between us. And be like, nope. Wow. Wow. Yeah, it was like, yeah. It was and then what about the showers? Because I understand that they had cameras everywhere. They even caught you in the middle of the night, like making out with Harry. Yeah. But what about the showers? Because it's illegal to film someone in the shower. And then you could like masturbate in the shower. So there was, um, we had to keep our mics. When we took our mics off the shower, we had to keep them right outside the shower door. And those mics were very, very strong. They could pick up anything, like a little moan or like a little sound. <laughs> they, picked it, they picked it all up, as you guys saw. So. There was like an area of the shower that was like frosted, I guess. So the yeah. the private parts were not shown, but you could see the cameras could see our heads and the cameras could see our feet. And there was like a frosted area that you could 
that you couldn't see through it, but it was like, if there was hanky panky going on, it would have been visible. And the, the mics were also there to pick up. Wow. That's crazy. No, what did, did you do when they did a good job of like logistically organizing the show in some respects, but if there's a season two, what do you think that they should do differently? And do you think that they could get away with like a secret of, you can't have, obviously it wouldn't be a secret every, anymore. Everyone knows this show. Yeah. I don't think if there was a season two that people would try and get away with anything because obviously Harry and I, like when I, you know, went down under, um, <laughs> we thought we fully got away with that. I fully thought we got away with it until the longer, <laughs> so like she finished and I was like, he, he, yes. And then she was like, but, and I'm like, Fuck. like, I'm so like in my head, I'm like, I'm sorry, mom. I'm sorry, dad. <laughs> didn't need to do that. Like, so yeah, I don't think if anyone filmed it again, like season two, that they're going to try because it's just, you saw, you couldn't get away with anything and there was mics everywhere. So yeah. Yeah. That was a question we got a lot for you is, um, did members of your family watch it? Did you watch it with them? Was that weird? So all my family is in Ontario right now. I'm in Vancouver and my mom messaged me and she was like, is that your butt naked in the shower? I'm like, <laughs> maybe. And then she's like, are you kissing a girl? I'm like, maybe. And then I told my dad which parts to skip, but I think he just watched the whole thing and he was just like, you look beautiful. I'm proud of you. And I was like, thank you. Like my parents are so supportive and I actually, they're super chill. Like growing up, they're really strict, but now they're just like, we can't stop her. She's, she's on a rampage. So they just like accepted and love me. And I told them, I'm like, no negativity, please. And they've just been really supportive. So that's been great. And you found I love. Mean, so what more could they, what more could anyone ask for? And you, you handle yourself so well. Everyone was like an asshole at times to you. And that's the worst feeling in the world to feel ostracized from a group of people. So it was not the easiest situation and you like are everyone's favorite. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that. <laughs> okay, more questions from Instagram. We got so many. From Alexis Bird. Was there anything on the show that we didn't see that you wish had aired? I've been getting this question a lot. Like, um, of course, we were there for a month. So there was a lot of stuff that um, didn't wasn't shown. But I think there was a scene where Harry asked me to be his girlfriend that I really wanted to watch back. But then I was thinking about it. And he asked me at the night in the private suite when we lost 20K. And I'm pretty sure we were naked. So I was like, <laughs> glad. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. Like I was expecting after I saw the shower scene with Kells, obviously the scene with Harry and I came later. After I was like, you see my booty? I'm like, shit, what are they going to show from the private suite? Like I was expecting the worst, but thankfully they didn't um, show the nitty gritty of that because that was like a really personal, cute moment. So I'm glad it's like kept between us now. Yeah. Um, there, the show has blown up like exponentially. Everyone's watching it. You have 3 million followers on Instagram. It's so crazy. Um, who is like the coolest celebrity that you know has watched the show or they've tagged you in Instagram stories. They followed you on Instagram. Um, there's this. Okay. So hopefully she doesn't watch Ariana Grande followed me and she followed That's my awesome. brand. She followed my swim label. I messaged her. I'm like, you are so sweet. Thank you so much for the support. She's like, you're so cute. I'm like, what is life? What is this? <laughs> you have to send her a bathing suit. I know I want to, but I don't want to, I want to, but I'm just nervous. Like, I don't know. Like, that's just like, that's crazy to me that she thought like she wanted to follow me. So I'm like, that's epic. Um, I know there's like this, a lot of Brazilian, crazy Brazilian people, like my roommate's Brazilian. She's like, you need to follow all these accounts. Like they're all blowing you up. Like there's this account with like 20 million followers. That's like daily posting like gossip about the show. And I know Harry had a phone call with Justin Bieber yesterday. So I was like, what is life? Like, this is nuts. That's, that's so, so crazy. crazy. Would you ever move to LA? Um, yeah, for sure. I was going to move there before quarantine, but now I have to wait. But I definitely want to be there for sure when this is all over with Harry. That's so exciting. Well, we just love you. I could talk to you all day. You're literally so beautiful. Like I want to look like you in every way. And yeah. I just want happiness and love for you. And thank you for being so vulnerable. Honestly, I feel like you really opened up on the show and it totally paid off like for the and entertainment it made the show, value. Made it show what it was. Also justice for Haley, because I don't think she got a good edit, but she seems like a fucking hilarious girl. She really is. Honestly, justice for Haley. Like, <laughs> is she in love with you? Not like, not like a lesbian kind of love, but we do love each other. Like she had my back the entire time and it just was, her good qualities weren't necessarily like highlighted, you know what I mean? But she's an amazing person. She was, she was fucking hilarious. Like everything she said was just so honest and she was just like so herself that like, I mean, if people hate her, they hate her, but she was just hilarious to me. Like I loved everything she did. Same. Yeah. yeah. Same. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. 
I don't even think she got a bad edit. I thought she was fucking hysterical. And when all the group was being like hurt, they were being herd mentality. Like they were just being losers. And she was like, you're all stupid. I don't even want to be here. And I agree with her. Everyone was so upset. Like, oh, you kissed him so upset. I'm like, guys, two girls made out. Are you really that upset about it? Like, come on. Like, yeah. And it was so funny. Entertain yourselves. Like we're entertaining ourselves. Like do something. Like have fun. Yeah, that was one last thing. I just need to know what eyeliner you were wearing the whole season. <laughs> um, I actually, I think it was like Kat Von D. That's what but I I'm used. really bad at doing my makeup. Like, I looked at some scenes. I'm like, ew, it was so cakey. Like, no. Like, oh my God, not at all. What foundation did you use? Um, I, I literally use drugstore makeup. Like, I don't use anything too crazy. I think it was like Fit Me, my, Fit Me by Maybelline, but the Laura Mercier setting powder is like what was the game changer? Everything in this in the heat because it was so 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 hot. Like the girls wore full faces every single day, every single day, and I was like, how? Like it didn't make sense to me. Like the the glam that went into it. Like we were so hot, but yeah, Laura Mercier setting powder. Did any of the rooms have air conditioning? Yeah, mm-hmm. they did. Okay, good. Thank God. Yeah. There was like a nice room there when we were like locked in the bedroom when the guys were doing their challenge. I was like. We need the AC. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Okay, well, everyone follow Francesca, even though she doesn't need your followers because Ariana Grande <laughs> followed her and like what else matters? But it's Francesca Farago, F A R A G O. We love you. Thank you so much for being here. Like, this has been a dream and you are so cute and pretty. And we just want you and Harry to be together forever. Like, you're the new Meghan Markle. You guys are amazing. Totally. Thank you so much. I love you guys. This made my day. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.